Uh, welcome back, this is The Clay Golem, and this is our Foundry VTT series. Uh, in this video, what we want to do is to summarise our changes that we're going to be doing to enable us to do our spell casting. So in the previous videos, we found lots of problems with trying to get our spell casting working nice and synchronously um, with a one-click kind of thing, and we kind of solved it or at least solved a big part of it. So I just wanted to use this video to summarize the steps that we do um, to be able to set that up nice and easily for us. Uh, if you've been following along, it's been quite a journey. It's been up and down, we've been all over the place. It's got quite complex and you probably could spend quite a while going through the videos trying to work out what that process actually looks like. And it's really simple, now we know. So that's what this video is about. Okay, so what modules do we use for this? So we are using advanced macros, automated animations, uh, the D&D 5E animations. We are using Dfred's convenient effects. Uh, we are using JB2A, that's Jules and Ben's animated assets. We're using the free content version. And we're using Sequencer for that as well. Now we also have uh, Sockitlib and the Lib Wrapper, which are required to run those modules. And we've also got times up on ours so that when we've cast those spell effects, they do in fact time out and end correctly, which is beautiful. All right, so how do we actually go about this? So first of all, uh, we're going to select a spell. We're gonna, I'm going to, uh, let's have a quick look here. I'm gonna drag in this individual. It's a new person we've not seen before. Uh, oh. What happened there? Oh, they have a very weird token. What's going on? <laughs> this is a great start, isn't it? Let's have a quick look at tokenizer. What's why is that trying to play? Yeah, we should we should have that. I'm not sure why we've got double thing there. This is not working as intended. Can I stick not prefabs? Can I stick you out over here? Okay, that's interesting. We've got a we've got a problem straight away. Marvelous, love it. That's not actually a token. Ah, I see. It's because it's got all those spell effects on. Right. That's from where I was playing around. See, I've got invisibility on. That's the. Ah, <laughs> uh, it's a good job I have never ever claimed to be experienced or a professional. Let's delete all of those. Can we see you again? Yes, we can. Right, we just want one of him. Now we can see him. Uh, that was interesting that he was invisible on our screen when we're the DM. Hmm. Okay, anyway. So I brought this individual out. This is Rock Gnome, uh, who is a wizard, and I've just given him a whole bunch of spells. So we're going to set up some completely new spells here. We're going to set up Blur, and we're going to set up Shield of Faith. So I know we've done Shield of Faith before, but I've undone it. First of all, our steps are going to be making sure in Dfreds, we're going to go to Manage Module, sorry, we're going to go to Configure Settings. We're going to go to Dfreds Convenient Effects. We're going to scroll down and find this Prioritize Targets. This means when we cast our spell, it will cast it on the targeted token, not the selected token players can't select other tokens they don't own therefore they can't cast our spells on them if we use targeted tokens it means we can apply the effect or rather players can apply the effect when they cast their spell on their chosen uh, tokens okay so that's really important we need the players to have this as well prioritize targets it's more important for them to have it than it is for us as the dm and somebody mentioned um, one of the monks uh, add-ons that helps us push our settings onto our players that we might look at that which means we can force players to have that prioritized targets on instead and again part of that is about consistent gameplay for the players so they can focus on playing the game not getting stuck on all the mechanics because this stuff it gets complex so we want to make it smooth okay so now that's done that we only need to do that once we're going to go to our defreds effects we are going to find our first one, which is going to be Shield of Faith. And we're going to drag that onto our macro bar. It's not going to live there. We're just going to do that for now. Now it's in our macro bar. We can, if we want to, we can edit the name of it. I'm going to, just to keep all mine following the same thing. 
I'm going to save that macro. That macro now, if I go bottom left hand corner, I've got my tiny little folder down here called Browse Macro Directory. It shows me all of the macros that I have, including this Shield of Faith one. Because it's in here, I can chuck it off my hotbar. I don't need it on there anymore. I'm going to right click on this, configure ownership, set it to so all players observer. What that means is the players can run that macro. Okay, so we came into some problems where the players were trying to do stuff and the defreds wasn't applying because they couldn't do the macro. That's the solution to that. Brilliant. So the macro is up and running. Um, obviously, we can run that. Put that on, we can run that whenever we want. Put that on Haley. Whoops. Uh, take it off of Haley again. No problem. But we want that link to the spell. So what we're going to do, I'm just going to clear out my chat here. We don't need all that. Okay, so we're going to go back to our game settings. We're going to go to configure settings and we want the automated animations so that we can bring up this launch menu. In here, we are going to search for Shield of Faith. Here it is. We've got a preview window which shows us what our effect looks like. We need to do two things in here. First of all, on the right, we've got add macro. Click this opens up a new window. We need to make sure that our macro that we've just created is selected in here. Okay, so that's the macro over here is now selected in here. That means when we cast this spell it, and it works out, oh, hang on a minute, it, this spell is being cast, it will play the animation and it will run the defreds effect. So the next thing we need to do is under options, we need to make sure that this play on is set to target. So just like with defreds, we want the animation playing on the target and we want defreds effect being applied to the target. So we're going to do those two things. That's it. That's done. Prove the point. Let's target uh, let's target Nundro there. Just move over so we can see what's going on. Move over there, chaps. If I go to my spells, I'm going to go to what do we do? Shield of Faith. Cast my shield of faith. Take the animation of Nundro the target and applies defreds to Nundro because he's the target. That's exactly what we want. Okay. So caught up with that. Right, let's do the next one. So we're going to do blur next. Okay, so this is one of um, our rock gnomes. So I'm going to find blur in defreds. I'm going to chuck that on my hotbar. I'm going to rename it. You don't have to, but I'm going to. SE Blur. That's for spell effects blur. It now appears in this macro directory here. I can chuck it off my hotbar. I'm now going to go to Configure Settings, Automated Animations Launch Menu. I'm going to find Blur. I'm going to, I've already got the added macro on here. I'm just going to make sure that this is picking up the SE Blur macro we just created. Options, make sure that says play on target. Done. And to prove it, we're going to cast it on Haley. Open him up. Oops, minimized him by accident. We're going to find our blur. This is there. This is the problem when you get lots of things. No, I can actually search in there, can't I? There we go. I cast my blur. It applies to Haley the animation and the status effect. That's it. That's everything we were trying to get to was those two really simple things. And once now we know it, it's really, really straightforward to do. It's like that's so blinking easy, isn't it? So what will the next step be? Let's try a different spell um, that I know is going to give us a couple of problems. So let's let's find if I can actually type. Let's do the same with Guiding Bolt. I'm going to slap Guiding Bolt down here. I'm going to edit it so I can change the name. And save that macro. It's now in there. Chuck it off there. No problem. What I didn't do, or what I didn't do with Blur, is I didn't configure ownership. So I need to configure ownership with Guiding Bolt as well to Observer so the players can use it. 
Okay, that's done. Go to configure settings, launch our automated animations menu, and we want to find bolt, which is a ranged spell. Oh, here it is. It's already come straight to it. Okay, so we've got a little animation, Boo! which is lovely. Add macro. It's got guide and bolt in there already where I was playing with it, but I'm going to just make sure it's picking up the right one. Easy. Open this up a bit. Now under these options, we don't have a option for where we're going to target because it's only going to hit a target. Okay, so that one's done. But this is where we get a problem. So if Haley's going to cast that on poor Randall, okay, here's our guiding bolt. We cast this, nothing happens. Why did nothing happen? Because guiding bolt requires an attack because it's a ranged attack spell. If we click attack, it played the animation and it applied the effect regardless of whether Haley hit. So I don't mind it playing the animation, but at the moment, even though Haley missed on this occasion, it still applied the effect. So I would need to then take that effect off. So that's a, that's a problem we need to solve. Um, exactly how we're going to get that to work with ranged attack spells. Um, we have a choice. We could either not apply the effect until we know the it's hit and then manually apply it. Because again, to manually apply it, all I need to do is to click in here. I can just run that macro to apply or unapply it. So it might be that we still apply our effects through macros when we know it's hit. But we will look at see if there's a more elegant solution. Okay, we're going to do one more spell to, uh, to illustrate this same kind of problem. Slightly different one. We're going to look at command. So again, stick command in here. Rename it. Uh, it's now in here. Configure ownership. Won't forget it this time, which is great. Chuck it off the hotbar. Back to our settings. Configure setup. We want command, please. Our command is here on, on token. Go to our add macro. Make sure we're selecting, just making sure it's picking up the only version, which is the new one, which is good. Under our options, we want to make sure it's playing on target, not on source. Easy peasy. Okay, job done. Or at least we would think so. So let's cast command on uh, Sorryman over here. I'm going to clear my chat, just so it's easier for you guys to see. Cast command. It's done the animation, and it's applied the effect. However, Sorryman has an opportunity to do a saving throw against this. And while it's not ranged attack, there's no attack involved, like a guiding, uh, guiding bolt, uh, there is a saving throw. So again, we don't want to apply, we can apply the animation we don't want to apply the defreds effect unless that saving throw is failed. So in both of these instances, we're currently applying the effect regardless of whether it hits or they fail the save. So we do need to change that. And again, same with this one. We have a couple of options. The first option is to not apply defreds through the spell casting and then manually apply afterwards straight from the menu. It's not difficult. It depends how many times your players are casting these kind of spells. Um, but that's kind of a DM admin issue. It does keep it still nice and smooth for the players. So am I too worried? I don't think so. There's going to be a limited number of spells that your players are going to be using that are like that. So you absolutely could have those macros on the hotbar. And if your monsters are going to be using those kind of spells, you're going to know that up front ahead of time. So again, you could add them to your uh, your macro bar down at the bottom left. So those are perfectly plausible ways to do it. And they're definitely the easiest way from a setup point of view to do it. It's just not include the defreds macro in the automated animations. But we will look at ways that we can potentially do that where it won't apply defreds unless that saving throw is failed. We know what the DC is. So sorry, man can, can do that saving throw. He passed it, so we shouldn't have that effect that effect applied to him. Uh, actually, that was interesting. That was Haley. <laughs> Wrong character selected. That was Haley's saving throw. But anyway, 
Um, yeah, so that's the next problem we need to look at and see if we can smooth that out. I also need to consider how much I care about that for my games. I'm probably happy to stick in the interim with applying those macros through defreds directly um, for when that spell hits or for when that saving throw is failed. Um, but there we go. So for a lot of our spells, we can set them up automatically. Brilliant, perfect, that's exactly what we want. I hope this has been helpful as a summary. Also gives us a clue what some of our next steps are to look at. Uh, and I know there are things like MIDI, um, MIDI QOL and stuff that can help with some of these things. I'm just a little bit nervous with some of the changes with the 3.0 game engine changes and some of the mods playing catch up a bit. But um, yeah, just I just want to make sure those things are all stable before we start importing new mods that may change function. Cheers, guys. Take care.